Manhattan prosecutors are investigating new allegations of sexual assault against a former Columbia University obstetrician. Robert Haddon has now been accused by dozens of women, including Evelyn Yang. She's the wife of Andrew Yang, who ran for the 2020 Democratic nomination. In an interview with CNN last month, she said that Haddon sexually assaulted her during, her, during a pregnancy appointment in 2012. Multiple accusers came forward after the interview aired. Yang's story also sh shone a light on a different controversial criminal case against the former doctor. In that one, Haddon ultimately walked away without prison time. For more, let's bring in CBS News investigative reporter Graham Cates. He has been following the story. So, Graham, what do we know about these allegations? Right now, in kind of broad terms, we know that they track with a lot of the original things he was accused of with, with uh, women charged in the original case, which is that the majority of the women making allegations say that they uh, were his patient when they were uh, pregnant or postpartum. Um, there's a few uh, outliers, though, that are very disturbing. Uh, two of the women say they were 15 and 16 years old at the time, uh, attending their first gynecological exams. Oh, it's, it's horrific, these allegations. Now, I, I think it's also... Um really disturbing that this is not the first time that Haddon has been accused of sexual assault. There was a case back in 2012. Can you tell us about that? Right. Uh, he struck a plea deal in 2016. Uh, initially, he was charged in the cases of six women, and prosecutors indicated during the case... Oh, that sorry, they... and that was 2014, right? Yes, The case, yeah, yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, and so uh, prosecutors indicated they knew about at least a dozen more women than he was charged with. So we're talking up to 19, from what I understand. And then ultimately, he reached a plea deal... Uh, where he only had to plead on charges related to two of the women. And ever since, there has always been really, really uh, raw feelings about that because that means that prosecutors can't go for charges for, for any of the other 17 women that they, that they say they knew about at the time. Uh, and because it was all pled out. Exactly. It was part of the deal. They, part of the deal was they said, any case that we know about at this moment, we won't pursue charges for. But what's interesting, though, is that in the years since, and, um, and especially after the Yang interview, uh, there have now been more than 50 women who have come forward. There is a lawsuit that we've covered for years that involved 30 women now, um, and they expect it to ultimately grow to at least 70. It could just keep growing because the Yang interview has brought so much attention to it. And do we know about uh, these women who are accusing Dr. Haddon now, um, if they feel like they have their confidence in uh, the DA to actually prosecute this case, is it higher now? The people I've talked to were part of the original case, right? and they've protested. They've asked for Vance's resignation, um, and they're basically saying, we don't trust the DA's office to handle this well because the first time around, he knew about, or his office knew about, all of these women, and they struck this deal that, that kept Haddon out of jail. And, and to be fair, the DA's office has long defended this deal. They said... What we wanted to get out of this was a guilty plea uh, for him to have to forfeit his medical license and uh, for him to be registered as a sex offender. But it's worth noting that deal actually downgraded the level of sex offender that he was. Uh, state re regulations had him being what's called a level two. That means you search it online, you see his name, this guy's a sex offender. They downgraded it to level one as part of the deal, which means that it kind of only shows up in a background check. It wouldn't show up if you go on the state's database. And they're still defending that decision. Yes, yeah, uh, right up to this week. I'm wondering if um, if any of the previous uh, previous accusers, if, if their stories will play into um, into this new round of investigation into Dr. Hedden. It's definitely sparked a lot of attention over the years, but as the plea deal reads, they really can't factor into any new case that's brought against him. And have we heard anything more from Columbia University? Columbia University has offered their apologies to women, they say, uh, whose trust he betrayed. Uh, but they haven't yet really commented on the lawsuit against them. And that's a lawsuit saying that the, uni that the university system knew about allegations uh, against Haddon going back to the early 1990s. They haven't answered any of those allegations yet, at least publicly. Have they denied them? Or they just haven't even answered them? Uh, no, they, I've, over the years, I've, I've repeatedly asked them about the lawsuit. And, and the statement that we get back is always that um, they, they feel they, they abhor the conduct of the doctor and, and they apologize to the women. But in terms of talking about the lawsuit, that never happens. Graham Cates, thank you. Thank you.